Greetings fellow men, servus Männer, it's Redfield Germany again and today I want to talk about the physics of segregation. Now we all know that if many cultures or many races live together in a country or in a district, in a city, they normally don't really mix homogeneously, they tend to segregate. So for example in the Middle Ages in Europe or also in the Third Reich, the Warsaw Ghetto comes to mind. It wasn't actually self-segregation like nowadays, but it was forced segregation. So the state or people of power said, uh, this kind of people can live here and the other group can live there. But uh, nowadays in the West, it is rather self-segregation. So people do that on their own. Of course, one explanation could just be uh, the real estate prices or the rent uh, level in a certain neighborhood. Uh, but that cannot explain everything. So when you see how segregated many societies are, you ask the question, are these people all racist? Is it because some people are just not allowed in a certain neighborhood? Is it because of crime? Are we all racist? And just to illustrate the level of segregation in the United States, I found a very cool map. Um, this is based on real census data and every colored dot on this map is one person that was counted in the US census. So you can zoom in and I um, invite you to play around and explore this map. The link is in the description below. So the legend, the different colored dots you can see here, and now we can look at many metropolitan areas, but first of all we can see that uh, in rural areas, in the Midwest for example, or in the center of the country, uh, whites, the blue dots, are really uh, the dominant contribution. And then you see on the different coasts, for example, where what kind of immigrants arrived. Asians, more on the west coast, and then also in the uh, south you see a lot of Latin people arriving, and you see a belt of black people in the uh, south on the east coast. And the highly populated metropolitan areas seem to be really strictly segregated according to this colored map here. For example Chicago or Boston or New York City. Also the Bay Area is very segregated according to race. Now this is just the data side. Um, everybody can collect this kind of data and make funky maps. But we want to understand the mechanisms, as I asked before. Is this because the individual people are racist and they just cannot stand to live around uh, people who are of a different skin color? Do people on an individual level want to live in segregated neighborhoods and uh, move and self-segregate accordingly? Now there is a very useful model that can help us answer these questions and it was devised by Thomas Schelling. Funny enough. He was born in Oakland <laughs> and he has a German name. Uh, he got a um, PhD in economics from Harvard University. Now his model looks the following way. So on a chessboard, on a two-dimensional grid, it can be more dimensions, but let's stick with the two-dimensional case here for simplicity. You have two different agents in the most simple form. Of course you can run uh, simulations with more than two agents, but let's keep it simple. So you have two different colors that could be ideologies, religions, races, whatever. Two different groups. So at first these agents of these two types are placed randomly with some vacancies on the chessboard, on the two-dimensional grid. And now we have to decide uh, for one parameter value. Um, it is the percentage of the neighbors that should be of the same kind so that an individual agent is satisfied. So these agents can be satisfied or dissatisfied. Uh, if we choose this value to be 30% for example, an agent will be satisfied if at least 30% of his direct neighbors will be of the same sort and he will be dissatisfied if less than 30% of his direct neighbors are of the same quality as he himself. And now what the algorithm, what the mechanics now does, is that um, agents are checked in each turn whether or not they're satisfied or dissatisfied, and then the dissatisfied ones can move to vacancies. And this will be updated uh, until everyone is happy or not. And this depends of course now on the parameters you use. So I found a web applet where you can play around yourself a little bit with different configurations, different sizes of the array, then um, different 
ratios for the two groups and also this very important parameter that describes what percentage of the direct neighbors must be of the same sort for an agent to be satisfied. You can also choose the number of vacancies. We will see later that vacancies are actually really important because imagine if there are no vacancies people would be unhappy but they cannot move. That would be a frustrated system where people want to move, where the energy, so to speak, from a physics perspective, is not minimized, but the system cannot change. So let's start, for example, with a population of two groups, and both groups are kind of racist. So they require that um, more than 70% of their next neighbors, and they have eight next neighbors, so of these eight neighbors, they require at least 70% to be of their own color. And then we see that this, of course, surprise, leads to a segregated outcome state if we let the chessboard propagate for long enough. So I said it is a racist case because this number 70 is still very high. But bear in mind that these agents would be still happy and satisfied if 30% of their direct neighbors would be uh, of a different color and 30 percent is actually a large number but just bear in mind that um, this is not over the top crazy racist this number 30 but nevertheless we arrive at a fully segregated uh, outcome where you have uh, one group on the left and the other group on the right and there is one distinct line of segregation in between. So next we can look at um, how it is when this uh, parameter of satisfaction would be 50%. And I took one uh, simulation with uh, slightly above 50 and one was slightly below because uh, of these eight neighbors, of course, um, it really depends whether or not you're at 51 or at 49 uh, percent but there is not much difference even though these people on an individual level every person is still satisfied if half of his neighbors are of a different color so even though you live in a neighborhood that is half populated with another race there is still no white flight you're still a happy camper in this neighborhood it doesn't matter the collective will assume a segregated state and this is rather surprising I think and we can go even further we can look at a population that is so liberal and so friendly to other races that even with uh, only 35 percent of their own in-group people would still be satisfied so this is a very tolerant population and even here we will find not total, but still segregation. You still see clustering. There is no well mixed state. Even though, even with 65% of foreign or different racial neighbors, people are still satisfied, we see that the collective, you know, the system is assuming a segregated state. And uh, this cannot be stressed uh, enough um, that. Even though the individual is not racist, is not having a very big preference for the own group, the outcome of the collective is segregation. And this is so important to understand that large systems behave differently than their individual members. We have collective effects at play here. And physicists understand that quite well. Effects like magnetism cannot be um, explained on a single atom model because uh, ferromagnetism, for example, is a many body effect, is a solid state effect. A single iron atom, for example, even though it has magnetic properties, is not ferromagnetic. So, in social systems, of course, we also see collective effects that cannot be understood on an individual level. So, when we see a segregated uh, city, a segregated neighborhood, uh, we can actually not say that, oh, this is because of racism, this is because people are racist. This is actually not true, as these models clearly show. And now we can also calculate uh, this system for a 1488 kind of situation. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, for a 14. Uh, 86 situation. It always has to add up to 100, of course. And we see that um, 
minorities also, of course, segregate in a little bubble, uh, which is probably like Chinatown or something like that, or Harlem. Here you can see very interesting that the vacancies are actually something like a membrane around these bubbles, which makes sense because it is a buffer that keeps these hostile groups from each other. But these groups are actually not that hostile, as I said before. We still have a value of 52% here for the preference level. From an individual level, you would say, oh, they would be okay in a 50% mixed neighborhood. But the outcome is complete segregation. So this preference parameter, we shouldn't understand in terms of racism, but rather you want to have people around you that you can connect with. You know, you speak the same language, you have the same hobbies, you connect on an emotional level because your culture and all your mannerisms and everything is just compatible. This is how I would understand that. And another interesting thing to say about this minority case is that here you see people require at least 50% of the people around them to be their own kind. That means with the minority and the majority of the, in this group, now it is like that, that the majority will have a very high probability of always being surrounded by at least 50%. It is actually the minority that has the very unlikely case that they will be surrounded by at least 50% of their own people unless they self-segregate. So if you uh, counted all the dissatisfied people who want to move here, you will see that the largest part of the dissatisfied people would actually be the minority because they have the same interface with the majority but they're much smaller. So that means the system propagates into a segregated state because of the dissatisfaction of the minority, not the dissatisfaction of the majority. So this is just something that I noticed when I looked at the board for this uh, minority case. And now of course physicists come along and they pick up this uh, model that actually uh, Schelling, uh, I think he came up with that on a plane ride and he actually did this with pencil, paper and an eraser. So he actually propagated this not with a computer but on a long plane flight uh, by hand, which is actually a funny story I think. But now these physicists, they do more funky stuff, of course. I mean, they understand really the mechanisms behind it because they can identify that when you look at these bubbles, you know, that looks like a cell with a membrane or a droplet with some emulsion in between the water and the oil or something like that. And uh, physicists, of course, think uh, instantaneously about surface tension mechanics, uh, where you would have a contact angle, a wetting angle, and then you minimize just the surface energy of the system. So this is what physicists do with this model now. And then you can go crazy, of course. So you can overlay a map of real estate prices, for example, or you can include some other funky factors and see how the propagation goes. And maybe together with the census model, we will see that people will actually try to um, test some models on human psychology and group behavior with real census data of the maps I showed in the beginning of the video and test their computer calculations and their uh, advanced shelling models against that. That would be actually very cool to see. Okay, so to sum up, I would say that even though individuals are not racist at all, groups of mixed populations will always self-segregate if they have vacancies, so that means if they have the possibility to self-segregate, then they will do that. And they just act like molecules in a, in a liquid or in a gas. And this is just the message I want to bring across, that it's not so much about the individual, it's collective effects. And it doesn't matter what the individual thinks. It doesn't matter how conservative or how left-leaning or how religious an individual is. The collective will always act according to the laws of physics and statistics. And this is how it is. You get segregation no matter how liberal the people are, within reasonable um, constraints, of course. So just like in the Mouse Utopia experiment, we see that populations act like a gas or a liquid. And we can understand populations in terms of physics, describing the states and characterizing them by their density or their satisfaction, dissatisfaction by their temperature, whatever. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, catch you guys again soon. Have a great day. Servus.
Kameraden.